Well, good morning. good morning. I welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we gather to worship this morning and honor the name of Jesus and just give thanks to him for welcoming us always um, into his presence. And it's just good to come together as God's people um, in the presence of the Lord, just to worship and um, just to say thank you. Um, just a few things that we want to lift up um, today. You can see in the bulletin that there are some meetings that are taking place, and we will add the outreach meeting um, on Wednesday, and that's at 5.15, and just to come um, when you can for that. Um, also, you will notice on November 19th is um, our church conference, and it's at Grand Island Trinity. And um, I really encourage you to go. I know the church conferences are different now that you don't have them at every church. And um, we need at least two people to attend other than myself. And so um, be thinking about that. And Christmas program practice starts November 26th. And it will be um, immediately following um, worship. I think that's my understanding. And so we will definitely, as you wait, have a, a wonderful time of fellowship. And Operation Christ Christmas Child, there, if you are participating in that, the boxes are out there, and you notice the dates are this week for dropping those off. Um, so please um, check that out if you are interested. Um, I just like to, after I've given the announcements, now I like to welcome the guests who have joined us today and, and thank you for, for being here. We love to have guests and we invite you to fill out the welcome. Um, we'll send you a, a note and um, give thanks to you for joining um, and being with us today. If you have any prayer requests or um, concerns or any announcements you'd like to have lifted up, we invite you to fill out the other side. If you want it lifted up today, um, you can um, hand it to one of the ushers. You can just raise it up and they'll come get it. And um, I can lift that up um, today in worship. I'm going to take a breath. <laughs> I hope you've all already kind of taken a breath as you've come to worship today. Just to take that deep breath, knowing the, the presence of the Holy Spirit is here with us as as we begin our time of worship, I'm standing and proclaiming God's word from Psalm 33, 6 through 9. And so I invite you to stand um, this morning. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their hosts. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stirred form. The beauty of God's creation. We give thanks and praise to him today. Um, for we see his glory there. And so I invite us to sing for the beauty of the earth this morning.
Oh Lord, we did sing a hymn of, of grateful praise, just thanking you for who you are, for all that you had given us, for your grace in giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, so that we may live in him. And so Lord, we ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that you would fill us with gratitude today that we would be able to know about your enduring love, your great faithfulness, your goodness to us, and how you continue to pour forth your goodness today as we, we talk about Sabbath and how it's just a good gift that you have given. Oh Lord, we just thank you for these moments together, and may we honor you today. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. I invite us to join in singing forever this morning. continue to praise God, the goodness of God.
in. Isn't that why we, we join together as God's people just to sing together with one voice of the goodness of God. It's a testimony for our love of God and all that he has done in his faithfulness. We come together to prepare our, our hearts for prayer, um, recognizing that we do have a lot to give thanks to God for. Um, we woke up this morning, um, the sun, I don't know if it's still shining, but um, a beautiful day is planned. We can give thanks to God even when the wind blows. We can give thanks to God, and we can even give thanks to God when the Huskers lose. Um, and, uh, and so we are a people of gratitude. Um, and so we just continue um, to recognize God's goodness. We also know that God is even good in the midst of of hard times, of difficult times. And so we, we hold um, one another in prayer. Many of us have come in here with weight and, and hardship, um, grief, um, pain, and we, we recognize that the goodness of God is that he is with us through it all. And he also is the one who brings hope and healing. And so we lift those up, um, those in our bulletin that we care for, for God's goodness and care. We, we give thanks um, for God's presence um, in the midst of loss, that God is our comforter. We especially want to lift up Yvonne Stauber's family um, in her passing. And I just want to lift up, in case you haven't read, just her um, funeral as, um, at Stromsburg. It's at Sweet Home um, church, and so that is in the country. I don't know where that is at, just so you know. I mean, you can put that in there. I just want you to know that's where it's at, in a small church there, and so that you, um, and that will be Thursday. I believe it's at two o'clock. Make sure you check on that um, for sure, and um, also we have a, um, another funeral of somebody um, from the community. Maybe you know her, Viola Gibbons. She, it's at um, Metz on Monday, um, her service, and then we will be providing a luncheon for the family um, here on Monday after, or Friday, it's not on Monday, it's Friday, it was Monday, now it's Friday. I plan on being there Friday. <laughs> so just lift up those who experienced that loss this week. I invite us to go to the Lord in prayer um, and to prepare our hearts for prayer. Um, I invite us, um, Laura and John are going to provide the music to lead us to there, to, to come to Jesus um, this morning in prayer. Weak and wounded sinner, lost and left to die, raise your head for love is passing by. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Thank you. 
Sometimes the way is lonely and steep and filled with pain. So if your sky is dark and pours the rain, then cry to Jesus. Gracious and loving God, we're so thankful for the invitation to come. No matter how we come, you love us. And you accept us and you call us your own. And so, Lord, we're so thankful for that. And so, Lord, we, we come to you um, lifting up our gratitude again for who you are, that you are a God who is full of grace full of mercy and compassion and goodness. That you are a God who sees us and knows us so deeply, deeper than we even know ourselves, and you still say come. And so, Lord, we come confessing that we don't always come to you. We often get too busy and, and we turn away and we forget. And so, Lord, we're thankful for this opportunity to come back and to remember and to know that you are a God who is faithful to forgive. And so, Lord, in that we, we know that we can come with all of our hurts and all of our brokenness and we can lift one another up to provide encouragement 
So Lord, we lift up all who need your healing upon their lives. There are so many that are, are sick and who are hurting and um, I've experienced just the devastation that comes from being sick and their health. And so, Lord, we just pray for your healing. Lord, we just pray also for those who are in the midst of loss and grief. There is no time limit on grief. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would meet each of us in our need as we, we grieve those um, that we love and who have gone to, to meet you in glory and experiencing the joy of salvation. Lord, we, we pray for our world, Lord. We pray, for, um, we pray for peace. We pray for your love to be known and your love to be shared, to be between friends and between enemies. Lord, we just pray for your love to intervene. We pray for war to cease. We pray for people to be able to come together and, and work things out and to be able to communicate. We pray for wisdom and guidance, your guidance and your wisdom, not our own, Lord. And remind us over and over again that your love is for all people. So, Lord, help us to have a love for all people. Lord, we, we pray for those who do not know your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that the gospel would be proclaimed, that they would come to know the hope of the world who sustains and encourages us, but saves us to the othermost. Lord, we're thankful that you have called your church to be a part of that to partner with you and what you're already doing in the world. Give us eyes to see and a heart to love. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. And, and so we join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Are there any children that would like to come up this morning? Love to have you. I need this very corner right here. Do we have some more coming? Like the olden days. Yeah. Is this, the, is this what happened in the olden days? Sit over here? Okay. <laughs> Tradition is important. Tradition is important. You're right. Well, I brought, what do you think these are? Anybody have a guess? They're sponges. Yes. And you see water right there. The confirmation students, they definitely know what these are. They used these the other day. Well, this sponge is, is really, really hard, right? And you think? Let's find out. Let's find out. You guys are so good. Just as I told my family on an email, I said, it's science. It's science. So, oh, look, it's starting to soften up. Oh, it's getting really soft. I should have used warm water because this is cold. So I have my sponge, and it, it got soft, right? And then it got all filled up, but it's full. Do you think there's any water in this sponge? Yes. Is that what happens? Does a sponge soak up the water? It looks like exactly what it was before, but there's some water. And a little bit lighter color. So I want 
Yeah, I want us to think of this sponge as our life. So when we think about when we're in Christ, we're just full of life and we, we go out into the world, we're, we're full of Christ and we just give. And we, we give of our lives and we go about our lives. And um, for you guys, you probably, some of you go to school, right? So you take some of that. Um, and, and that takes a lot of energy, right? Yeah, you have to come home and study. Some of you are going to preschool, and you're in kindergarten. That takes a lot of energy. Um, you pl- what else do you do in your life that takes a lot of energy? Sports. What else? Going to the farm. That takes a lot of energy. Going to the pumpkin patch, that's important. I hope you adults are thinking about all the things in your life that take a lot of energy. Running, do you like to run? Yeah. Playing. Sometimes, have you ever, you know what takes a lot of energy? Sometimes if somebody hurts us, that takes energy. That, that kind of takes away, whoa. And the, I knew I was gonna get messy and we're starting to run out. What else is something else? Something that takes a lot of energy. Going to the nap. <laughs> that takes a lot of emotional energy. You're right. Go to Chicago, and pretty soon there's just nothing left, right? We have nothing left to give, and all the water is gone. And you know what? So, what happens if this stays out of the water? What's going to happen to it? It's going to. It's going to dry up. And it's going to look the exact same. And it's going to look the exact same. It grew a little bit. It's going to dry up, and it gets going to get hard again. No, you, it's hard. Did you want to try? It's, it's hard. You can pass that one around. Yeah, it's as hard as it comes. You bet. Okay, everybody's going to try. You didn't, I know, I look kind of weak. Did you, you want to come over and try it? Yeah, I, you, you didn't try, okay, you, is it hard? Oh, of course, it is really hard. And so what do, if our life has gotten really hard, being sometimes then we, then it, we, we need to become soft again, don't we? That we need to be filled up again. You didn't, well, come on over, you can try and squish it. We need to be... You want you? You don't want to squish it? That's okay. You could try it if you. So what do we need to do? Think about this is our life, and has have you ever heard me say that Jesus is called the living water? Yeah. Well, today you are. Today is Jesus is the living water. Never ask a question. <laughs> today I'm telling you that today Jesus says that He's the living water, and that means He restores us, doesn't He? And so when we place ourselves back into the living water, he fills us up, or if we put this one in, he begins to soften our hearts with his love and his goodness and his grace. You want to try it? It's getting softer, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's getting softer. And he softens us with it. So when we are with Jesus, our hearts begin to fill up. We get to be restored. You bet. I know. That's, I, this is where it gets tough. <laughs> and it becomes soft. And we want to have soft hearts. Why? Because we love Jesus. And that helps us to love others, Right? And gives us the energy to go about our lives and do it in a way that honors Jesus. So we need lives that are full. And we're going to be talking about the word Sabbath today. And um, Sabbath, um, sometimes we call the Sabbath day. Sometimes we call Sunday the Sabbath day. It's a, a day of rest. That's what Sabbath is. But it's a special day of rest. It's a day of resting in Jesus where we begin to be restored. Um, And God calls us to remember the Sabbath day. Um, And so that's what we want to do is because that's a place when we remember the Sabbath day, we go, like they sang, we go to Jesus and we find our strength. And so I invite you to pray with me and knowing that 
Jesus. When you're so tired and worn out, Jesus is the place to go. Go to Jesus and talk to him about it. He loves to hear your voice. Let's pray. And you're invited to join me in prayer this morning. Dear God, God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence and your life. Help us to come to you knowing that you restore our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, man. Well, thank you for coming up and helping me. If you stick around afterwards, we can do some cleaning. How does that sound? No? No? Okay. <laughs> I know you guys would do that for me. You can, you're welcome to come with who you have your sit. And then I hope you're watching the pictures that you have been coloring. If you, there's a new picture there with a squirrel that says gratitude. You're welcome to color any of those pictures and leave them here and we'll put them up on the screen and there's also a treat there and we'll go ahead and sing. This is where children belong. And now Linnea, um, she's a member of the finance um, committee. She's going to come and share with you this morning. You took all I had. No. (laughs) Good morning. But you know Colorado lost, right? (laughs) (laughs) On behalf of the finance committee, um, I have uh, to give the above and beyond update, which is $24,942.50. So... We thank you for your dedication and all your prayers are included in that too for our church and for everyone in it. So, thank you. You're welcome. 24,942 means we haven't quite made it, folks. <laughs> And um, I am thankful for your generosity, Um, and maybe it is time to go above and beyond even what we think we need. Maybe God has a different plan for our church. Continue to pray for how God is calling you to give um, in order to sustain um, his ministry through this church, and I, I thank you. Um, I invite you to use this time um, of of prayer for yourself or praying for the church and its mission um, as you listen to the music, and it carries you.
Amen. I invite you to join me for our offertory prayer this morning. O oh Lord, we marvel at your faithfulness. You keep your promise to remain with us by your Holy Spirit. Help us to trust you in every difficulty. Empower us to share the good news of your abiding presence with our neighbors and friends. Accept our offerings, building up the community of faith so that we may serve others with the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Well, we are continuing um, our sermon series on faithfulness in seasons of change, trusting the above and beyond generosity of God. I love the scripture verse um, from John. Indeed, we have all received grace upon grace from his fullness. And so I invite you just to, to hold that in a space in your mind as, as we um, talk about, um, is Sabbath a season? Is Sabbath a season? Sometimes we don't like to talk about Sabbath because as I found out this week, it was quite convicting. And so I invite us um, to hear God's word. I'm going to be reading um, from two scripture verses, um, one from Genesis and one from Exodus 20. The one from Genesis is very short. Um, usually it comes on the first page that you begin. Um, Genesis um, at chapter 1, we begin to hear the story of how God created. In the beginning is the words that he used, and he creates light, sky, dry land, seas, plants, trees, the sun, the moon, the stars, creatures that live in the sea and creatures that are on the ground, creatures that fly. And um, finally, he creates humanity. He creates us. And we're made in the image of God. Together, we reflect the image of God. And all of it, what does God say? It is good. It is good. Then we come to day seven, and I invite you to hear the word of the Lord. Genesis 2, beginning with verse 2. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And then I invite you to hear from Exodus um, chapter 20, beginning with verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do, not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male or your female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. How many of you growing up have specific memories of Sabbath? For many of us, it was Sunday. Specific things that you did on that day. Or maybe it's what you didn't do. A lot of you, maybe it would have been, um, you might have to be a little bit older than me um, to recognize that it used to be kind of the law of the land for there to be a Sabbath. 
Um, I know we had to drive an hour from where I lived in, in order to do anything on a Sunday. We'd have to go to North Platte in order to, for there to be anything open in my small community. So it was like the world had taken the day off in my world. And the things that I remember about that day is going to church sometimes, I remember fried chicken. I remember everyone around the table. I remember sometimes going to visit grandparents or family. I remember, if we weren't doing that, I remember laying in the living room watching football game after football game after football game, eating popcorn. And then I remember, because this is a holy day, I remember Walt Disney, then Hardy Boys, and then Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> All three in a row. That was our holy day. But there was something kind of important and special about that day. Many of us, um, I think we've, we've lost the day. I read a book um, now I can't remember his name, Sleeth, called um, a 24-6. In a 24-7 society, we need to be a 24-6 people. 24-6 instead of 24-7. That we, our bodies, that God has created us for Sabbath. It's woven into creation. It tells us on the seventh day, when God had finished the work, God rested from the work. And did God make that day good? No. What did he make that day? I'll test your listening. He made it holy. God made it holy. Holy. And we hear in the, the commandment, I just read um, the fourth commandment of, in Exodus, that we are to remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. There's something distinct, there's something important, because it's not only just good, it's holy. And that is the, the call that God has for our lives. It is actually the Sabbath reveals a characteristic of who God is when he declares it. On the seventh day, God rested. Does that mean that God took a nap? No. He's always watchful, always watching. But God showed restraint. God could have continued to create more and more and more, but God rested and showed restraint. I think that's one of the things that we struggle with today in our 24-7 society is restraint. We get kudos and claps for being overproductive going the extra mile, moving forward. Or if it's like those that he is giving the command to, Moses, God has given the command to, for Moses to share on that day, they are to remember who they are and where they came from that they were once slaves in Egypt. And now they are no longer slaves. Their life was only about productivity, brick after brick after brick. Just one more brick, one more brick. I don't know how many times I say that in my life. Just one more brick. I got one more brick to do. One more thing. And he's telling them to remember, I have set you free. And on this day, remember that. 
Remember that I have set you free from your identity being based on your productivity. That your identity is based in who God says you are. That yes, even if you rest, the world will continue on. That rest is a calling that God has put on us to receive. It's a gift to us. Sabbath, rest, because God knows we need it. How is our 24-7 world working out as you look out around it? Depression is skyrocketing. Suicides are on the rise. I think 2% every year. We're over-anxious. We have families that are struggling to stay together. There is no peace. Not between one another. We can bicker about the most ridiculous things. During these times, I will tell you, I would be terrified to try and get new carpet in here because we would fight endlessly about it. Because we are people. What happens when you don't have rest? We get grumpy, we get anxious, we get overwhelmed easily. We could call the doctor down to tell us what not getting enough rest does to our lives. It steals our lives, increases our stress levels. What do we need rest from? We need rest from our work. We need rest from the heavy labor, the mind work, the creativity work, from the decisions that we have to make every day. When I have a day where I've had to make 100 decisions in that day, I get in my vehicle and I'm like, praise the Lord. And you have that time where you're just coming home and you're starting to to settle down just a little bit, just a little bit. I never settle down completely, a little bit. And you walk in the door and you're faced with one more decision. And what is that decision that's facing you the minute you walk in that door? What's for supper? And I'll tell you what, I just tell Jeff, I cannot even make that decision. I cannot make one more decision, just make it. I'll let you know if it's wrong, (laughs) right? We're in a place where we are just overwhelmed and we need rest for healing. And so what was the Sabbath created for? It was created for our wholeness and our healing and our restoration. It was created for us as a gift of God's grace. So what does Jesus say about the Sabbath? Jesus tells us the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. He has come to set us free. And the year of the Lord's favor is here and now and in my presence it is so. He is the Sabbath. He is the rest. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. And he says, come. All you are who are weary and heavy laden, come. And I will give you rest. And only Jesus can give us the rest that we need. But there's always the battle. What do you do and when is the Sabbath? I mean, we we have people who can argue Saturday, Sunday. 
I'm working on Sunday. Some of us work, have varied schedules. Life is busy. What do we do with that Sabbath command in our lives? We take it. We receive it. Paul tells us not to argue about the day or the seasons of it. But we have to be a people who intentionally seek out our Sabbath. My Sabbath is supposed to be Friday. I can honestly say I might stay home on Friday a lot more than I do, but I don't always allow it to be a Sabbath. Where I seek God and I seek God alone, that I seek from laboring, doing my job. Because Sabbath is meant for refuge, for freedom, for healing, for relationships, for rest, for napping. If you're a napper, you don't have to be a napper. You don't have to take a nap. It's not required. That's part of it is the religious leaders of Jesus' time, in order to try and keep the Sabbath holy, they made so many rules that they missed the intent of the Sabbath, that the Sabbath was meant for healing, for connection, for wholeness, that our first reason to have a Sabbath to keep it holy is because we need a deep connection with God and we need to refocus and listen for the heart of God to take that pause in our lives and remember it's not about me it's about him it's about Jesus to pause in gratitude to think upon how God has provided through the week. To think about all that has happened in the week, whether we need to lament our week. I don't know about you, there are times there's nothing left to do on a Sabbath but to cry about the whole week. And that's a good Sabbath thing to do because what does it bring? It brings wholeness and it brings healing. And when you cry out to the Lord, it brings hope because I know I have no control and I can give it to him. When we come to the Lord for healing, Jesus tried to correct our Sabbath thinking. When did Jesus do most of his miracles of healing? Sabbath to remind us to have mercy, to bring healing, to feed those who are hungry, to care for those who are in need, that that is Sabbath care. Why do we do we serve on a Sunday? Not just because it's convenient, but it's healing. The Kleenexes we provide for those who are in grief. We don't know how many thank you notes we got from the school thanking us for the encouragement they provided. How many thank yous we got from people that we sang to and yards that were cared for because it brought healing to their life. And what joy it is to come together and be a part of the healing of our community on one day brings healing, it brings connection with relationships, that we would actually get rid of all of the information coming in that is not needed. This, I, this is terrifying that I just realized, and I think God just thumped me on the head while I was praying, is I had my phone up here for um, a demonstration, and I realized when I was praying, it's just so natural, my hand had a hold of my phone. And I let go of that phone really quick when I noticed that I did. We need rest from information. We need rest to become whole. And I think there is something beautiful about a Sabbath that a community keeps together in order to worship and love God together. There's something beautiful 
and it's a witness to the world. D.L. Moody, a theologian, once said, when the Sabbath goes, there goes the church, and when the church goes, there goes your community. Are we experiencing the fruit of our 24-7 lives when God called us to 24-6? So I invite you, the reason why, there's a whole lot more that needs to be said about Sabbath. And this is not to lay a burden upon you, but to consider what are your roadblocks to Sabbath and keeping a Sabbath What are the roadblocks and how can we intentionally free ourselves from those roadblocks? And I will tell you that scripture doesn't tell us about the day, but there's something beautiful about coming together. And I invite you just to take a step on what entering into Sabbath would look like for you. And some of you are thinking, well, she doesn't have kids. It's a whole lot easier. You might be right. But it's not about being by yourself. It's about being apart and connected as a family. All the things I I wish I would have done with our Sabbath as a family would have been about connection, letting go of the phones, recognizing 24 hours can pass, without me touching that, somebody's got an emergency number somewhere. But it's not just about, um, that we could actually sit down. It's not about sitting and staring at each other. It's about having a meal together. And if you hate to cook, and it's not a delight, make sure you got some frozen pizza or peanut butter around. It's about sitting together. It's about playing games together. It's about taking a step. Because it's hard to make that Sabbath intentional. Professor at seminary, he says, your Sabbath is dependent upon the other six days of the week. And so to plan your Sabbath first, then plan your week. What day? And sometimes you might have to do it weekly because you might be working on Sunday, and I know games come on Sunday, and I know all of those things, but I invite you to intentionally think of a moment that you can take a step. One of the things I love about the Jewish tradition is the Sabbath begins at sundown. That maybe the night before your Sabbath, you, you light a candle in honor and remembrance You have a meal together, and then it begins with rest instead of ending with rest. It has nothing to do about your productivity. Maybe that's how you can begin Sabbath. Try two hours of your life being Sabbath. Maybe you can't give a whole day. You can't see it yet. Think about one day in your month that you can totally dedicate to a Sabbath and what that would look like for you. What would it look like you to take a step into Sabbath? To be still, to know, to play, to be connected with your relationships and your families and your friends. What would that look like for you? Maybe Right now, you can only see two hours of time that you can do that. I think when you begin to feel the benefit of Sabbath, you'll begin to extend that as a people. And when the church begins to live the 24-6 life, because we are no different, we live the 24-7 life just like everybody else. And people see the benefits That stuff changes the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, we all fail in keeping your Sabbath and we fail to keep it holy, to set it aside, to 
to glorify, honor you, to be filled with gratitude, to, to lament, and a, to know that you are a God that in the midst of seasons and changes, that you will be faithful, and your Sabbath is just a gift of generosity to us. And so, Lord, when we're called to work hard, remind us we're to work hard, but we're to focus our hearts and our lives on you not just for a season, for another day. And it's not even just for a day, Lord. Help us to begin to live in your Sabbath rest every single moment of the day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite us to stand and, and sing our hymn, Be Still My Soul. Be Still My Soul. I know somebody took a Sabbath up there. <laughs> I invite you um, to soak your soul in the living water of Jesus this week. Find some time. Take a step toward Sabbath and um, give glory to the Lord. It is holy. Go in the love of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to bring glory to God the Father. And may you know his peace. 
Amen.